Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Huracan aircraft. This is build number two in the series. It's gonna be a productive video. I'm sure we're gonna get lots done in this video. So stay tuned and we'll get back to the assembly and build of the Huracan aircraft. Alright, so last video we got the vertical stab done, we talked about all the different products we're putting in the aircraft, we got our lines run on the inside, got the pipe uh, basically drilled and ready to mount. So, next thing we're going to do in this video, video number two, is we're going to focus on the elevators or horizontal stabs. So, We've got our lines all run. The next thing we have to do is set this big piece of the fuselage aside, pull the actual elevator surfaces out, and work on getting our servos mounted. So let's put this thing away, pull the elevators out, and take a look. Okay, so something to keep in mind here with all these surfaces. We covered this a little bit on the vertical stab or the rudder. Uh, in this particular instance, you really need to use ball links with a decent amount of throw. So if servo line here was perpendicular to the surface movement, then everything would be perfectly straight. But because we are intersecting at, um, I don't know, like not a 45 degree angle, but it's angled, uh, what happens is as the surface moves, you can see it there, it kind of moves sideways and sideways, okay? So uh, just keep that in mind. You gotta make sure you're using ball links here, ball links here. You wouldn't be able to use a clevis or something without any side-to-side -side play uh, in this situation. Otherwise, you're gonna get lots of binding in that uh, ball joint, so. All right, so started with the left elevator here. Uh, so with the servo output shaft towards the surface, uh, we're nice and centered in this opening. Now with the JR servos mounted directly on that former and the JR servo arms, uh, we've got a nice couple millimeter gap there, so that's gonna work out perfect. Uh, this bolt we're gonna put on the other way. I was just using this to get everything kind of set up. So, But uh, the geometry there works well. We've got the surface centered. Uh, we've got a decent amount of throw here. Now basically just keep in mind that you're supposed to have 15 millimeters of down throw, 13 millimeters of up throw. Generally this would be measured at the root, so I'm just using it at the tip which is going to make more servo travel. But uh, our total servo travel for down needs to be the 15 millimeters of down plus the six and a half of down trim at full flaps. So basically we need about 21 and a half millimeters of travel available and we've got that available with the uh, the linkage set up there. So I uh, used the inner hole just like we did on the rudder and I'm gonna trim those off and use those, uh, those points on those servo arms. So we've got the geometry all set up here. I did end up using the longer shafts for the surface control shafts. So this is the longer one, that's the shorter one and I use the longer one and I cut about half an inch off that one and that worked out well. So what I'll do before I take this off is just like the previous one, we'll get the carbon all nice and set up and cut and ready to go and that will tell us which, uh, which length we need to put this back together when we put this back together. So this side is almost complete. And I'm just gonna do a little plug here guys for these JR servos. Um, these are the new 2K servos, so they're phenomenal. One of the things I really love about them is, so in this particular instance on the right elevator here, uh, put the servo horn on and the servo horn was cockeyed forward. Um, so I could use sub trim in the radio, but one of the things about these servos is when you program them uh, in the Xbus menu, uh, they actually hold their settings. So all I did in this case was plug that servo into the X bus port in my radio 
pull that particular servo up, adjust the neutral position, hit set, and now uh, we're nice and centered with uh, the surface. And now if we take this servo out of the X bus port and we put that servo back into the right elevator channel, the PWM channel. So now the servo is not operating as an X bus servo. It still holds its neutral. Previously that servo horn was cockeyed by about that much. So a fair bit. So just one of the cool things about these JR servos, I know a lot of guys think that JR is gone and they disappeared, but uh, their servos are still amazing. In my opinion, some of the best in the industry and uh, whether you're using JR radio equipment or not, they work amazing. All right, so both of our elevators are complete. The next thing to do here is to change the ends to our ash lock single servo ends so we're going to put those on each of the servo ends i've already installed my little button keepers that i love to use these are available on my website um, they hold the wire really really well they kind of lock in slide in at an angle and then lock themselves in so i've installed one of those on each of the elevator sections there and i'm going to change these ends on the servo leads. All right guys, so the connector has been installed obviously on the elevator side. We've put it inside the little clip there and we've kept that nice and short so it just barely sticks out of the elevator. On the fuselage side, we've got the other side of the clip on and just simply put two zip ties there around the snake skin so now this can't fall through the rubber grommet. And uh, the other side's already been installed so what happens now is when you plug this wing on, this just folds in away from the servo and uh, that works out really well for the whole connection port. So one thing I've talked about, I think in the unboxing video is just the fit of all this stuff. It's really, really nice and tight. So I got the other elevator or horizontal stab on, the carbon rods coming through, uh, the bolt that goes into the carbon rod. Uh, they've got it set up so when you tighten that bolt up, it actually is nice and tight where it actually pinches or it's just providing a little bit of pressure holding this horizontal stab onto the fuselage. So it's just a nice, snug, accurate fit on everything. So with that done, both of the horizontal stabs are installed. Well, I know we've said it before, but she's definitely girthy. All right, tail's been installed, or our horizontal stabs have been installed, the vertical is on, and uh, basically this portion is now complete for our tail surfaces. So I'm just gonna double check everything, and I think the next step is gonna be to install the pipe. All right, so there's a shot of the underside of it, and hopefully I can get in there and show you guys so you can see kinda what happens with the cable in there. Anyways, it just gets folded up in this area and it's completely out of the way of the servo linkages and stuff. And same thing on the other side there. So happy with that, that worked out good. Uh, still undecided if I'm gonna put some aluminum tape and stuff on those uh, pipe areas uh, above or below. I may do that, but uh, we'll see what happens. So anyways, that is the uh, other shot, other view of the tail section. Uh, you can see the fixing bolts here. Those are already pre-done for you and installed and everything. They line up with the carbon tube that goes in there just perfectly. So absolutely great looking rear end. Just wanna give a quick shout out to all you guys that responded to the donation request in the last video, the first video of the Huracan, uh, and to all of those that donated to the shop fund. That's what we're gonna call it, the shop fund. So thank you guys for your outpouring of support. Um, and if you haven't heard about it, uh, we're raising money to build a new shop. Uh, there's all the funding links down below, but uh, thank you guys for all your generous donations. It's very appreciated. All right guys, so next thing we're gonna do is reinstall the pipe. As we talked about previously, the seam is gonna go towards the top. 
Now I've already drilled uh, two of these locations, so we're already basically set up. Um, everything in the back end of this plane is done. And now we can install the pipe. And as we talked about before, we'll just screw that into place. These are the JR uh, new servo screws that come with the servos. They're phenomenal. All right, and there's a shot of the pipe uh, finally installed or finished and got three screws holding it in place. So that worked out good. Now I've got a little bit of uh, touch-ups to do here on the back end. And what I mean by touch-ups is I just use servo screws to hold those servos in place, but I wanna make sure I put washers on them. So I'm gonna pop these surfaces off one at a time now and just put uh, those proper washers on the servo screws. All right, so this is what I was talking about with the surfaces. So you can see we've screwed them in there with just the JR servo screws. Those would probably be fine. I'm just gonna put washers on them so it is a little bit more sturdy. And thankfully, I've got my RTL fastener kits. And these are all the pre-made kits. When they come in here, I got a whole bunch of washers and they fit perfectly over top of those screws. So uh, discount code available at rtlfasteners.com. If you use my discount code, it's listed down below, but it's JV30, you get 30% off your orders at rtlfasteners.com. All right, so we are all ready to join the two halves of the fuselage. We've got our wires sitting in there. We've installed those washers on all of the surfaces. We're happy with the wiring. Everything's been Loctited. So the back end of the fuselage gets a thumbs up and we are ready to pair it to the front end. All right guys, so I was gonna join the fuselage, but um, I figured it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to install the belly light before we've got this behemoth all put together. So. Got the light all installed. I'll plug this in for you so I can show you. So this is from Sky Candy. <laughs> Stupid how bright it is. Okay, so the camera's not gonna show you guys how insane that is, but that is so bright. Um, very cool light. Holy crap. So anyways, that's the belly light. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So all I did was put three holes in there. So we've got one for the wiring, one for the center uh, bolt that came with it. So here's the, the single bolt that'll go through. And then we'll just put a nut on the back side with a piece of ply. And then we've got this, uh, this pin here to keep it all centered. Now that former inside the aircraft is actually sitting right here. And uh, Chad's here helping out. We. Uh, split the light over top of the former because if we ever have to do a belly landing and we were sitting here that light's probably going to punch right through the uh, the airframe but if it's underneath the former then everything's supported and we'll just end up scratching the bottom so but uh, so we're just going to get that uh, installed and uh, the other side flip side of this is the wiring is right underneath the turbine but we've got about four inches underneath that turbine for space so plenty of cooling space all right, so the light is mounted. You can see there, we just took two thin layers of ply, put a blind nut in there, and the light is all good. So I did add some high saw to the plywood, just to add some strength to the whole thing, but uh, that part's done. So we are now ready to install the fuselage halves to bolt this thing together, I think. All right, and there she is, all put together. It is gigantic. So this put together is the same length as the diamond is with the nose installed and the, the tail extended. So it's a pretty massive plane and uh, fortunately it'll fit in the trailer, but man, that's cool. So we used blue Loctite on the four massive bolts to put the, uh, the fuselage together. Uh, blue Loctite, and uh, it was a pretty simple process to put that together. It all lined up beautifully. So just for reference, I'm six foot one inches tall. <laughs> it's a good thing we got tall, tall ceilings in here. Crazy. All right, so just working on turbine position and trying to figure that out. One of the challenges is with this 
bell mouth and I've shown it in the previous videos where it's got a bit of a funny step. Now that bell mouth is made of steel. Uh, it's probably a stove pipe, so it's pretty stinking durable. Uh, now it's kind of got a two-step system going on there. So what I've done, and this is how I generally measure the turbine position, is I'll find the location where the pipe starts to the bell mouth. Now this one's a little bit different, so I've gone a little bit past. And you can see the first mark on the carbon rod. I've measured 30 millimeters back, and that gives us our turbine location. Now in this case, uh, when I bump this up to the tail cone of the turbine, we're probably about 35 to 40 millimeters, which I think is going to be fine. Uh, the tail cone is kind of just in line with that first angle right in the center of the screen. So uh, we may have to do some adjustments on this after flying it and trying it out but I think that's probably the reasonable spot to uh, to start it out and if I was to guess that's probably the halfway point on the bell mouth. Now the Gramania pipe that came on the diamond uh, that's got a very very large bell mouth and they basically say split the difference on the bell mouth. Now this is a normal uh, setup here but you've got a big big angle so in this case, we have uh, basically kind of split the spacing there, which works fine. So we're doing something very similar on the Huracan. Uh, we're roughly going to go halfway point on the bell mouth. All right, guys. So next thing to do is get the sanding done for the tank. So we were going to put the turbine in, but uh, we want to make sure we get the sanding done beforehand so the turbine doesn't get full of dust. So the stock tank, as we've talked about, has a bit of an angle and an angle to it. Uh, the CM Jets tank is straight up and down, so we need to get rid of a little bit of material on the top and a little bit on the bottom on all four of these uh, tank holders. So we're just going to use a Dremel and sand those down and get rid of that material. <laughs> all right, so we got the tank installed. Uh, took a fair bit of sanding on that lower former down there. We probably have to take like a quarter inch to maybe maybe even half off. Quarter. Quarter inch. Okay, so a quarter inch. And uh, this, if you get this set up in your Huracan, it does fit. You kind of have to sand this uh, cross brace to make it fit, and then it kind of just jams in there and slides forward. But once this is bolted in, it'll be a nice, snug, accurate fit. We can still use the top tank, obviously use the main tank, and uh, that will be great. So tank is ready to install, which is good, so all of our sanding there is done. All right, so we're going to leave the tank overnight uh, rather than submerse it in water and checking it. So basically we've put a Tigon line on each of the vent and the main bung, and we've basically blown in there with your mouth clamped it off. Now tomorrow if I undo this clamp and air blows out then we know the tank is good to go and there's no leaks. All right guys, so we're making some great progress on the Huracan aircraft and I think the next thing we're going to do is before we bolt this turbine in we've got to deal with all of those wires that are coming from the back end. So I'm going to get those routed. Fortunately as we've talked about already there's all these half uh, circle openings in the former, so it's going to make make it really nice to uh, to run things through there. Um, also, uh, because the tank is now fitting, we know exactly where the tank's going to fit. And then, kind of our next step here is there's going to be a tray installed right here for all of the turbine equipment, UAT things like that. So, uh, anyways, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run those wires uh, forward through all the former work here. All right, so I just let the air out of the main fuel tank and it still held air, so we're all good there. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do on the main fuel tank is we are all wired up, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of silicone lube on that O-ring around the, uh, the bung there, and uh, then basically the tank is good to go. All right, and as per usual, we wanna rinse this tank out. So the bung is out. I've put a little bit of silicone lube around the O-ring itself, and we're just gonna take some isopropyl alcohol, uh, put it in there. Usually I'll use half the bottle, uh, rinse it out, dump it out in the garbage can, uh, use the other half, rinse it out, and dump it out again, and then the tank's nice and clean. 
All right, so we've got our lines run. We've got the tank kind of temporarily put in place. Now I got my measurement for my tray that's gonna go in here. And fortunately this is left over from the F15 build. So it's carbon laminated plywood, uh, really light. So this is what we're gonna use uh, to make that tray, that midpoint tray. Now I did uh, do a rough way of using ply and my plastic ABS and this actually ends up being couple grams lighter not that I'm super worried about weight but um, I was actually measuring it because I was worried about this being heavier so anyways this is where we're cutting to we're going to cut those little tabs off there and there and uh, that should fit nicely right on top of those two rails now the goal here too is it's wide enough that it actually hides uh, the lines that are running to the front and we do have the option here as well too with this little uh, notches back here uh, which may be for the tank, but anyways, you can run the servo lines down the center channel and then you could actually go right up the middle of that, uh, that piece there. So we'll see how that all works out. All right, so we got the tray cut. Uh, now I've drilled holes in the tray right there and there. So those holes line up with the center of those rails, which I think is gonna work out good. So next thing I'm gonna do is just drill those holes out in the middle of the rails. We'll CA this down, or CA the holes, and then screw it down. All right, so we got tray installed, tray screwed down, and now what I'm gonna do is take this out and we're gonna CA those holes. And just kind of playing with the location of the bubble trap here. So um, I like to keep this as close to the main tank as possible so uh, we can minimize the amount of uh, uh, tubing uh, in between here and the UAT and then the UAT and the pump. So the pump's going to get mounted here as well too. Uh, you want to minimize the amount of uh, restriction on the sucking for sure. That's the important part. So. Anyways, I think that's where I'm going to put the UAT. We're just going to have a nice bend here going to the main tank. So this line feeds the UAT. This line will feed the fuel pump, which can sit right in this area. And then our electronics can sit right down here as well too. So all of our turbine stuff should work out well right there. All right, so we got the equipment laid out on the, we'll call this the engine board. So the equipment's all laid out. We've got a nice bend here for the intake on the pump. Haven't tie wired these yet. Um, I've kind of stopped tie wiring these barb fittings. Uh, just found it really is not necessary. Um, anyways, I'll probably tie wire them, but uh, they're such a nice tight fit with that barb that they work really well. Anyways, so this is our layout for the fuel system. Uh, engine line goes back to the engine right there. And then this output line right here feeds the engine. So uh, pretty nice compact system. And then when it's installed in there, we have uh, some more room if we need to, to mount anything, but uh, works out well. All right, guys, this is a terrible diagram, but uh, hopefully you can understand this. So this is the actual stainless uh, double walled pipe. This is the portion that stops at the pipe and begins on the bell mouth. Now the bell mouth is basically split into two different distances with the angle in between. So we've got the first portion, then the angle, then the second portion. I didn't draw this properly to scale, so that's why I put the lines in there. Basically what I've done is I've put the end of my turbine exhaust cone right at the um, this side of that angle. Now, not saying that this is right, this is gonna be have to be something that I'm checking, but based on my experience with this style of a bell mouth, this kind of seems right to me. To, to kind of pick that halfway point right there, and I'm also, I, I could have gone right on the middle of the angle, but I think that it's gonna be better to be on the beginning part of the angle. So, anyways, that's where we're putting it, and, uh, that's where the turbine is currently sitting right now. So, all right, now if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I am not a fan of blind nuts, but in this particular case, blind nuts probably made the most amount of sense to mount the engine. So we ended up using blind nuts. That's, that happened. I know it's a first in a long time. I don't like to use blind nuts for things like gear because uh, when they pull out, 
um, or if you have a hard landing, it'll end up destroying the mounts and, and uh, I don't like them because they strip out sometimes and things like that. They are fine for some situations. So. so a little tip time here for you on fastening down your blind nuts. So a washer works okay, but I like to have one of the blind nuts you're using installed backwards on the bolt. So when you put the blind nut through the bottom, it should be a really snug fit. And then I use that bolt with the blind nut attached on the top to snug it down. It's just a really big amount of uh, area. And that ensures that you don't get uh, the indent of the washer. If you use just a washer and you're doing it against plywood, usually that'll create an indent where the, uh, the washer was. So this tip time has been brought to you by Bent Screwdriver. All right, so engine has been bolted down with the blind nuts and everything worked out well. Um, I didn't use Loctite because I have a feeling we're gonna have to take the engine out again. So as per my normal procedure here, I'll just put a green tape on the aircraft and just basically say Loctite engine bolts or write other notes on there. So I'm trying to get the angle right for you guys, but engine's perfectly centered. And uh, I think that's one of the nice things about using one of the normal engines on an aircraft is that it's fairly easy to center. If you're using a jet cat, you've got to raise it up, which is nice, but I know some other engine manufacturers, you have to drop it down, which is a bit of a pain. So anyways, engine is installed. Okay, so I've pretty much come up with the accepting the fact that we are going to be running our wires along here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these new wire keepers or wire organizers that uh, my 3D guy, Joe, thank you Joe, sent to me. And uh, these will be featured on the website uh, pretty quickly, just looking for some time to uh, take some pictures and upload them and all that stuff. I know it's no excuse, but anyways, these are the uh, the short, short ones. We've also got some longer ones as well too, some double wires, but I'm gonna install these uh, probably with some five minute epoxy just because I don't ever want them to come out. Uh, you can also use CA, but uh, because we've got time, I'm just going to use epoxy. So we'll glue those things down in that spot, and that'll give us some nice uh, solutions for running our wires. All right, guys, and that is going to be everything for this episode of the Huracan build. Uh, all of the details of the parts and everything that are going in this kit are listed down below. Again, thank you to those of you that reached out and sent a donation for the shop build fund. Totally appreciate it. Um, love you guys, and I think it's uh, in, a, in a manly sort of way. Um, really, really appreciate it, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, in this episode, guys, we got the fuselage joined together. We got lots accomplished. Next episode, I think we're gonna be mounting the front gear and we're going to be working on some of the electronics uh, and the layout of this aircraft. So, as I said before, we're waiting on the lighting kit for the wings. We may start to move into the wings as well too. So, anyways, that stuff should be here next week, which means that we will be able to progress and get uh, this plane done in a very short period of time. It's quite a quick build. Probably, if you really put, uh, put some time in, probably 30 hours, you could have it, maybe 40 hours, you could have it completely assembled and put together. Um, like I've mentioned, I do spend a lot of time thinking about stuff and, and thinking about layout and everything. So that is it, guys. Again, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. It's free to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.